Darcy, do you cherish your health? Mm. Then listen carefully. I'm a failed man, but when a failed man sees one last chance to grab the brass ring, he becomes a desperate man. Now, you kick this van or try to get attention in any way. I won't hesitate to use this gun. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Good. Morning, gentlemen. Gentlemen, I'm familiar with your weapons, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe you've removed your safety. Don't make a move now. Jack, do you think they eloped? Americans do that, you know. Young Dean is very capable, and I don't want you worrying about that anymore. Derek. Sir. I believe your loyalty to our commanding officer is matched by my long friendship to Gregory. His lordship said go to hell, I'd be the first to get burned. Good show, I thought as much. Well, ours is a delicate mission, Derek. And very shortly, I think we're going to have a sticky wicket when it comes to our commander's long service to the Crown. Right, sir. Well, then. At the lookout piers, uh, close by the tours base, there's a tradesman by the name of Nicholson, Alex Nicholson. He runs a small shop, rents all kinds of equipment, especially diving equipment. Now, there's nothing particularly remarkable about this man outside of the fact that he happens to be an expert deep diver. And he's familiar with your line of work, Derek, explosives. He has quite a nasty history when it comes to 
lending his talents for profit, quite a dossier. Military desertion, several counts of larceny, petty theft. He makes and sells harpoon gear, which is, of course, quite illegal here. And he appears to be quite good at it. So taken all round, I wouldn't be at all surprised at what our Mr. Nicholson is the exact man we're looking for. So, uh, I don't think it'll take too much persuasion to enlist his support. Just do what you have to do. But remember this. The secret of Luftwaffe B-97 is to remain precisely that. Secret. I'll get it, Jack. I'll get it. Morning is uh, Jack Stewart here. He is, sir. Come this way. Thank you. Now your eyes don't deceive you, Jack. Lawton. Damn me, is it you? It's been nearly forty years. Oh, and a colonel, no. What is it? Still special services. Still the same, sir. Ah, then it was you that ordered the clamp put on the telephone. Colonel, there's a lot going on around here that I don't know, and a lot that you don't know. Perhaps we'd better compare notes? I'll second that motion, sir. I should like very much to meet the man who took these scans. They're extremely sophisticated, sensitive. Well, I suppose I could, as the Bard once did, pose the question, are we all met? in uniform out there. He thinks he's here for you.
Fly off, see Harpoon. Mm. You know, they say that a piece of Nessie's flesh is worth almost as much as the old girl herself. You are Alex Nicholson. You are too welcome in the States. Moved over here and got yourself a cozy little home in Scotland. An acute little Scottish lass. I have a matter of mutual benefit I wish to discuss with you. What you Britishers call great expectations, huh? Absolutely remarkable. Well, gentlemen, this is a red letter day for all of us. You found your monster, and we found ours. Luftwaffe B97. Leave it to an Englishman to call Nessie a monster. A beastie, maybe. A myth. A wild thing. But not a monster. Where in God's name have you been, girl? In my room, of course. Like any dutiful granddaughter. But I waited all night for you out of my wits were concern. You waited up until the decanter was empty. You were dead to the world when I came in. Tis not the first time. Colonel, we're very pleased that you found your Luftwaffe B, whatever it is. But we are scientists. You can understand our relation. What young Dean has found is the lair of the beastie. That's where our interest lies. Only fitting and proper that it should, sir. Well, now, you are all entitled to an explanation, I suppose, and I'm prepared to give it. The aircraft lying there in the silt of Loch Ness was one of Hitler's propaganda planes. It had overshot London with its leaflets and came to rest there in the bay. Intelligence has uh, reconstructed the situation as follows. The date, November 7, 1940. The time, about midnight. You're lying. What? You're lying. It was October 6, and the plane did not overshoot London, and it was not a propaganda plane, and it was not carrying leaflets. It was carrying high explosive harbor mines destined for the shipping lanes. You could talk about your intelligence all you want, but I saw that plane go down. And I have devoted much of my life to finding out the facts behind it. And now I'm gonna tell them before my wild thing there puts me in an early grave. Why have you not spoken up about this before, sir? Withholding that kind of information in time of war, especially for a man in the service, why, that could be treason before the Crown. Truth? Treason? What do these things mean to you? Your whole reason for being here is a smokescreen to cover up the indiscretion of a fellow officer who cannot afford a blemish on his new knighthood. Letters, on papers, on trips, on inquiries. Even my son made a trip to Germany. God rest his soul. Matters at the time were desperate for the British. Hitler's savage U-boat attacks had driven the convoys from America into the North Atlantic and here into the North Channel. Gehring conceived a grand plan to mine the North Channel with explosives. Operation Juggler began with one plane here in occupied Norway, across the North Sea, down the Caledonian Canal, the River Ness, to Loch End. The plan was to move through the lock 
on into the North Channel with the mines. But here at Benares, our story took a different turn. The British have always used the lock for training. And at the time, there was an anti-aircraft station here, manned by one, Donald Gregory. You know him now as Sir Gregory, member of Parliament, Knight of the Realm. This night, when Luftwaffe B-97 crossed Benares, there was no one at the post. Young Gregory was in Inverness, coupled with a lady of the evening, and bombed out of his mind with hundred proof. Doers, I believe it was. Our story does not end there. Being born to the manor has its advantages. Influence of the highly placed is formidable. British intelligence leaked a story to the Germans that the young man at Totter Point had blown the bomber out of the sky. Gehring had to abandon his plan to mine the North Channel, and young Gregory began his steady climb to knighthood. You thought you saw a large aquatic animal. A seahorse, a seal, anything, it doesn't matter. You fired, you saw the explosion, and you got out fast. sure the plastics will explode those mines. They're 40 years old. Those aren't rugby balls down there. The shell is two and a half inches of German steel made by the Krupp Munition Works. That's the one thing they did right. All right, suit up. What we are faced with is a few thousand pounds of explosives lying at the mouth of Nessie's lair. Oh, I don't think the Colonel's concerned too much about the explosives. He's made a provision for that. His concern is that no one ever discover that the skin of that aircraft is unblemished. No anti-aircraft. No hits, no tail assembly blown off, no wing tips missing. Well, no. Mr. Dean, I have a lot to tell you, and it's not about that plane. It's about Nessie. I want you to promise you won't leave without me. Gentlemen, gentlemen, you may indulge yourselves in these fantasies as much as you wish after my driver returns. But until then, please, Spare me. I'm just where did your driver go, Colonel?
It's all academic now. I imagine in a matter of minutes, Hitler's B-97 and your precious Nessie will be rubble. Not even a footnote to history. Spencer Dean, I'm asking you without question to follow me. <laughs> oh, forgive an old man's indulgence. I was just thinking of the different pathways men choose for themselves. You, George, the scientist who would find Nessie. Analyze her, scrutinize her, cut her up. Write your technical papers and explain her all the way, all in the interest of science. Perhaps that's good. And you, Colonel, destroy her to hide your dark and shameful secret. Me? Well, I suppose I would leave her be and not let her mystery unravel for another 1,400 years. Aye, Jack Stewart. You are an endangered species. Gregory will retire to his place in Kent. And your professors, 
And your classrooms will have all the parts and empty they need for the microscopes. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Spencer Dean? Evidence on the existence of a population of large animals in Loch Ness remove the stigma of crackpot from any scientist or group of scientists who wish to investigate the biological phenomena of Loch Ness. This afternoon at 3, Mickey Rooney gets a second chance at life in the holiday feature, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. At 7, presidential candidate Jesse Jackson joins host David Frost on the next president. And at 10.30, counselor Troy faces a prearranged marriage on Star Trek, The Next Generation. All that and more coming up today on 50. long departed, and the haunting hour has arrived. What you are about to witness will chill your spine and push your imagination to the limit. Be prepared for an encounter with doom, for around every corner there lurks terror. This is Saturday Night Dead.